On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about cueing the scapulas to retract or pinching the scapulas during exercise. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I'm here with the crew from Champion PT and Performance. Uh, Dave Tilly, Mike Scudito, Kevin Coughlin, Lenny Macrina, and Lisa Lowe joined officially for the the first official like real episode from jonah monlock he was with our 300th anniversary episode was his introduction but now he's he's officially uh joining us for this one did i did i introduce you duesh did i skip you no nah, it's all good though what's up duesh podell in the middle <laughs> too i was you know you're going through zoom and i'm trying to not skip anybody but then i'm like wait i think i missed dewey but uh welcome jonah jonah's the uh uh the um director of sports science at um champion with us in our our gym he's uh doing a great job with that and i think he's gonna have a lot of valuable things to add to the podcast so welcome jonah uh len it looks like a whole new crop of students today what what a great episode of new faces or voices depending on how you do this but len who do we who do we have today Lenny's muted. It's first time. It's three hundred and second episode, but that's fine. You know, we're we're you're, easing you're into like, it. You can even, I can even hear you guys now. I've had technical difficulties all morning. Who do we have today for students today, Len? I don't know who they are because like they just started a couple of days ago. So <laughs> that's why I, I, I that's why you're doing the intros. I, I met him for five minutes yesterday. Everybody had masks on. I still don't know who anybody is. It's crazy. Uh, but sorry. <laughs> I think Luke Hopper is in the middle. He's from UAB. Um, and I think uh, Chris uh, Clary uh, is from Anderson University in Anderson, South Carolina. For those watching, he's in red. And uh, Dan Quillen, I mean, I say your last name, Dan. Dan Qu- Quillen is from the college that I've never heard of, Mary Baldwin University in Virginia. Is that Roanoke, mm-hmm. Virginia, I believe? So welcome, three new students. I just okay. on Hogwarts. <laughs> I bet you there's some history with Mary Baldwin, right? She's got to be somebody. Yeah. We should look into that. Mary. I bet I, I bet you Scudito's that's on it. <laughs> Scudito's, <laughs> he's guy. doing it. Scudito's muted, too. We, we're, we're struggling with the mutes today. Um, but I got my better I, mic on, so now I, that's where I went. I got my mic. I sound better yeah. now. I, I got to admit, too, this might be the best crop of students for nicknames like in a while. Like, you know, we got, I mean, Hopper's just, I mean, it's a built in nickname. I mean, Hopper's awesome, right? We got CC and we got DQ. I mean, there's like initial, initial letters. I mean, I don't know, that, that's pretty good. So, anyway, students, who, who, who do we have today while Mike is uh, fact checking if Mary Baldwin is <laughs> actually a person or not? We're going we're gonna to look into that. What do we got for a question today? So our question today comes from Omar from Tampa, Florida. He wants to know, would you advise against pinching the scapula together during exercises like a dumbbell press? He says, it never felt comfortable to me and always felt like I was trying to squeeze them, which was taken away from the press. Thank you. Awesome. And Luke, that's an amazing job. Roll Tide. That was great. Good job. Um, This is a good question. And I actually like how Omar, I don't know, it's almost like he... He, he pitched this to us really well because I really like what he added at the end where he said he felt like it was taking away from the press. So, you know, this is this might be an interesting question because I think we might have a couple of different approaches to answer this. But why don't we start from the rehab perspective and talk about pinching the scapula during some of our shoulder exercises and, and talk about maybe maybe what we think and what we do about that. And then maybe we'll shift gears to the performance setting and talk about that. But uh, who wants to jump in and start from the PT uh uh, uh, perspective. That's the word I was looking for. Um, Dave, you, you want to, you want to start a little bit with your thoughts? Why don't you, why don't you jump in? Sure. I think, uh, I don't, I actually think I heard this first from Charlie Weingroff, like way back in the day when he was doing his first initial, you know, 
seminars or whatever. And like, there's a difference between a cue and like a static position, right? So like someone who is like really overreaching and is really like not really doing any scapular movement, there's a cue to like retract your scapula, which are like would help assist with the exercise versus like having it statically be stuck in like a, a fixed position. So they'll say someone's doing like a prone Y or a prone T, if that person has zero scapular movement at all and they have a lot of like shoulder translation, then you would cue that person to be like, hey, can we get a little bit of scap action? But you have to understand that like in order for your arms to go over your head, you need scapular movement. So it's like if we really pinch the scaps down and back, there's no upward rotation, there's no posterior tilt, there's no elevation to get that last degree of motion. So it's all context specific, which I feel like we say 90% of the time on the on the podcast. But like, yes, if someone is really stuck forward and needs a little cue to retract, that's one thing versus if you don't want to have someone to be like literally stuck and they can't raise their arm up. So yeah, I like I, I like what you said right there with the qualification of that, because you started off really well saying, you know, if if you restrict scapular movement, this is what I heard from you, Dave, if you restrict restrict scapular movement, then that's not really what the shoulder does. I mean, the scapula needs to move, it needs to move in three planes, in order to elevate your arm. So it's, it's really weird to lock out one motion that's very much needed. Like, we're not talking about like stabilizing, like the lumbar spine and lumbar lumbo pelvic while you're doing shoulder elevation. That's a big difference, right? Like, to stabilize the core, like the scap's not part of this core the scaps part of the shoulder for these motions but i i like how you added though like perhaps if you're sitting in a really weird position i don't even know what that means but like if you're super anteriorly tilted or something maybe you need to um kind of reset the starting position of it but then don't restrict the movement right like so maybe like kind of pinch those scaps back to reset but then relax and then do the movement is that kind of what you were saying dave yeah. I, again, I think it's like, you know, you, you can always see someone who has like a, a, a lot of downward rotation, like a downward depression, like they're really, really down. They might need a cue of elevation. Someone who's really like forward, right? I see a lot of like young gymnasts, for example, who are extremely protracted and extremely tilted forward from their sport. They'll probably need a cue of, you know, retraction to kind of get them in neutral, quote unquote, or like a, a better. Right. So, that that, make, that makes sense. Record, that felt like after 10 years of listening to you and being your friend, that was like my final presentation to you as like a mentor. It was like after 10 that's, years, I had to give that answer well to, to pass. Not that, was pretty, that was pretty good. I mean, I, th I, I think you nailed it. I think that's pretty good. I mean, we do. We literally yell at people every day. Um, you know, people come in. I think this is just, this is like a huge misconception on the Internet, right? That, you know, pinch those shoulder blades. And sometimes people like they're doing it with like a huge shrug right like they're like their shoulders are up by their ears right <laughs> and, they're, and they're they're just stabilizing and you're like that is not functional but uh lisa like in the rowing world this seems even more relevant right between their postural adaptations and how they move their arms what, what are your thoughts on this this is something i feel like kevin's been in the room recently when i've just been like semi going off about the confusion of a lot of people when they come in with where to where their shoulder blades need to live on their body um, <laughs> And the the really tricky thing rowing wise is um, a big cue you get like from a coach on the water is to depress your shoulder to get your lats to turn on. Like so sh coaches will, you know, like if you're as you're getting tired, right, you might kind of sneak up with your shoulders into your ears. So then they're just constantly telling you to put your shoulders down and find your lats, but then you end up with these extremes where people are like we were saying like pinching down and then they're creating like TOS symptoms or they're creating like all these other problems that are just like like no your shoulder blade is supposed to move with you and no we're not like coming overhead overhead right it's not the same as like hanging from a bar in gymnastics or even like throwing a baseball or any of that stuff you're not coming that high up but your shoulder blade still needs to be like mobile um, right, in order right. to get your arm in the proper position, in order for your lats to be at the proper length tension relationship, in order for your upper traps to not be so long that all they want to do is turn on and pull your shoulder back up. Like, and so I have all age groups of rowers that come in, whether it's been from years on the water of a coach telling them like, keep your shoulders down, keep your shoulders down, or other PTs trying to help them with shoulder pain and then cueing them into these pinching motions and confusing them into feeling like all they need to do is just hold their shoulder blade back and then they're doing what they're supposed to and their shoulders going to work well and then you know and and then we can see kind of how like the everything sort of just gets really confused and falls apart and and legitimately i have like 60 year old rowers coming in just being like and i don't really know where this needs to live so they're like 
just creating all these issues for themselves. So I, <laughs> this is one of my, I feel like I've rants to Kevin very frequently recently of like, why are these people telling, you know, that you need to keep your shoulder blades static? Like that makes, you know, just, it just doesn't make any sense. So um. I feel like Kevin's the recipient of rants often, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, not, not even PT related usually when I'm in there, but there's, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wonder where this came from, right? I'm like, I'm trying to think about it. Like, like if this was a hip, right. Or maybe a knee, I mean, do you stabilize one side of the joint and move the other one? Like, yeah, maybe. Right. So, so maybe it's the hip you're, and you're trying to do a hip exercise. Do you stabilize lumbopelvic, which is the acetabulum, right. And then move the femur. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess you do. Right. So, so I, I see maybe people are like, let's stabilize the glenoid and just move the humerus. But w- what they, what they then expect though, is that they have full humeral movement for the shoulder, but no, I mean, you need the glenoid to move, to move the humerus. Right. So let's flip this a little bit and let's talk about performance because in the weightlifting world, maybe even like the powerlifting, like an even competitive mode, right? You know, perhaps there is a, a reason where this is beneficial, right? And I don't know, uh, you know, Dewey, Jonah, who wants to jump in and talk about, you know, do we, when do we say let's stabilize the scapula during an exercise? What type of person, what type of exercise, what do you guys do? Jonah, you want to, you want to hit this one? Uh, yeah. So what I would say is we're going to, do upper body pressing movements with a wide variety. So some of our movements like a landmine press or a cable press or pushups, we want the scaps moving. Uh, I think it's important to train the scaps to move given everything you guys just talked about. They move in real life. They move when we're playing our sports, but there's going to be certain movements in the gym that will be optimized if we do try to keep the scaps a little bit more in a set position. Doesn't mean that there's going to be absolutely no movement, but it, like you mentioned with powerlifting, Um, If somebody's doing a barbell bench press, we might as well coach it at least a little bit in a way that the people who are the best bench pressers in the world do it. And if you watch most power lifters, their scaps more or less are staying retracted the whole time. There's probably a small degree of movement that's happening. Uh, So it's not like I'm going to be staring directly at the scap. And if we get one inch of protraction, I'm not going to be yelling at the athlete for that. But I do see a lot of people who, when they first start doing a barbell bench press, they do have a way too much of a reach in which case we'll be cueing them to try to stay a little more static which, which makes sense right so the the important part in let's say like a bench press and a let's say a competitive bench press like like a power lift competition right then the the important component is just the movement of the humerus to push the bar up right so the more you can stabilize the better right and and to that person just to be clear like that is quite functional because i want to use that word intentionally right there that is quite functional for that movement but i think what happens is is like that's a that's a very small movement it's below 90 so theoretically that 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 is just your humerus right like you know what i mean like that it, you don't you don't need as much so it, it, is that you know what we want for normal function of the shoulder you know probably not for overhead reach and stuff but that may be a little bit more specific so uh do anything to add to that or what do you think did jonah nail it yeah um yeah no he nailed it on the bench press i'd argue that even on like a competitive back squat you probably want a little bit of a uh, retracted scap to create like the shelf for the barbell to sit on. Mm. I think as, in terms of powerlifting, I think the, the main conversation is we're trying to have as little movement elsewhere as possible, right? We right. want our prime movers to be doing all the work. So if we're doing a squat, we don't want other things moving because we already have a ton of weight on, on you know, on the bar, on our spine. We got to do whatever's possible to stabilize everything else so that our legs and our you know back can do the work. So um, yeah, retract on the back squat, retract on the bench press, like Jonah said, um, everything else probably keep it, you know, moving just like it's supposed to in real life. Yeah. So, you know, go back to Omar's question. It sounds like he was very specifically talking about, you know, dumbbell bench press, which is, which is fine. And maybe that's, that's what he's doing. So, I mean, I don't think we, we, we coach all our athletes to do it that way. Right. I mean, that's, if you're, if you're trying to be a competitive, you know, bench presser, right. So if you're, you're in power lifter, like competition type thing, then that might maximize that lift. But I think with our athletes, that's not like a definitive thing that we're always doing. Some people we want the creative, you know, freedom of where their scap wants to move. Right. And, and, and that's important. Important. So, uh, so Omar, hopefully that helped. Um, you know, I think that was a really good question because we do see that every day, a lot of misconceptions about that. So hopefully that helped. If you have a question like that, head to micron.com, click on that podcast link and you can fill out the form to ask us another question. Anything you guys want to talk about, we appreciate it. And please head to Apple podcast, Spotify, rate, review, subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.